Today I'm going to be showing you how to use the four-in-one rotary tool from Xtools, which is called the R2 Pro. It comes with a roller rotary, which is what you see here. It comes with a chuck rotary, which can be used for things like mugs that have handles and a tra the traditional rotary doesn't work for. It comes with the sphere rotary, which can be used for things like ornaments or baseballs. And it also comes with the ring rotary, which of course is to be used for rings. So I'm going to only be working on the roller rotary today because we're going to be doing tumblers. And so the first thing I wanna show you is it comes with this really important measuring tape. And what this does is there are different colors that also correspond with different letters and also Greek symbols so that you know how to set up your rotary tool and also where to put your honeycomb inside of your actual M1 if you're using a honeycomb. So first I'm gonna show you how we would measure this thin tumbler. It's nice and easy because it's all one shape. So I'm just gonna take this around and I'm gonna put this through and then I'm gonna pull it nice and tight. So for this one, I just fall within the red for all three things. I mean, I just make it with the size of it. And so this means for here, I need to put it on C, so I have it on C, but if it was were to have been smaller and fallen on B, then I would have to decrease the size of this down. Now, if I'm doing the bigger tumbler, I'm gonna do the same thing. And believe it or not, this one just barely makes it, by the way. Believe it or not, this tumbler is gonna go also on C. So mine is set to C because that's what I needed for both of mine. So it's really easy, it comes with a screw. So this is the one I would do. I would unscrew this and I would move it over one if I needed B and this piece sits here and this would then, this piece which easily moves would just go into B. And if I needed to move it to A, I would take this and move it into A. But as you can see for this, my tumbler easy, easily fits right on here. And what's great about this flat tumbler is I don't actually have to use the second piece, but let me show you what, what I would have to do if I needed this one. So if I'm doing this tumbler, it does not stay steady. So it comes with this extra piece, which is actually really helpful. It's gonna sit right up against this. And I can move this over. And this will help so that I can make this be level. Whenever you're using the rotary tool, it's super important that everything is level. I will say my table is pretty level. I talk about this later in the video, but just make sure that your table is level before you start using this level with your rotary tool. Because if your table is not level where your M1 machine is, then this is not going to be accurate. But this will be accurate because my table is level. So I'm gonna put it on here and I can see by the bubble that it, it's not level. And all I have to do is turn this dial in the correct direction until it is level. So I'm just gonna keep going up until my bubble looks to be in the middle. And why this is so important is as it's lasering, if this is not level, it means that it is not going to be the same look because the laser is gonna end up being closer to one side than the other when it's unlevel. So like if this side is further down, the laser is gonna be much closer here than here, so you're not going to get a consistent look across your tumbler. Now, when you put this in, it should auto measure, but if not, they also give you this really nice measuring tool, this ruler that you can use for manual measuring. So, if I'm using again for my tumbler, I have, this is my main roller. It also comes with this cord which I'm now gonna show you 
how easily you attach this to the back of your machine. It's super easy, it plugs right in, and then you're just gonna turn this until it's in the right place. And then I will show you what the rotary looks like inside of the machine with a cup on it and how we set up our program to cut on our tumblers. This is what it looks like where it goes. You just wanna make sure you turn this till it's in the right place and you just twist this to tighten it. Now for putting on my honeycomb tool, I can see that I'm actually pretty close to being in beta, but I think I'm gonna be down here. So we're gonna try this first to see if this is the right spot. So I'm gonna go ahead and stick my honeycomb in. I'm gonna take out my foil that I actually have in from a previous project. Okay, so let's try this again. I'm gonna go ahead and put it down here in this bottom spot. And my rotary tool is going to sit on top of that. Before you do anything with your rotary, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that your machine is actually level because it's really important when you're using the rotary tool that your cup is level, but your cup, you can't tell if your cup is level if your machine isn't level. So I worked back and forth to make sure that my machine is level because it really was not level because I'm working out in my garage and I'm working on a temporary table, which definitely, you know, garage is slope. You have to remember that wherever your machine is, make sure it's level before you use the rotary tool. So I'm going to be using two different cups today to engrave. I'm gonna be using a Yeti cozy type of thing. And I'm also going to just be using this generic Walmart Ozark trail tumbler. Now, for both of these, I wanna make sure that my placement looks good. And I have a logo on the Yeti on both sides. So like normally I would probably just not worry so much about it and just put it where there's no logo. But because it's on both sides, I really do wanna to try to line it up. So what I've done is I've printed my design and I'm gonna just make sure that I like the size of it. And then I'm going to temporarily just put some tape to hold this down. And then I'm gonna tape a frame around this. And that's gonna help me with placing my design on my cup once I get it inside. And so I'll show you in a second what that looks like. Now for this cup, there is only a logo on one side. So I'm just gonna place mine kind of somewhere on the other side, wherever. And because the lid can go kind of any which way, this is a really good first cup to engrave because it really doesn't matter where my design ends up. It would only really matter if it was like kind of off center with this logo. But as long as I do it somewhere over here, then it really doesn't matter so much about the placement. And plus this is such an inexpensive cup compared to something like this. This is a really good first cup to start with if you've never used the rotary tool. So this is what I'm talking about when I talk about kind of making a grid around my design. I'm going to take this off before I place it in, but this just kind of tells me an outline of where I want to make sure my laser does not go past. And for this one, it's even easier because the, my top and my bottom are very determined by the size of this. So because of it, I only put a line on either side just to make sure I stay within that when I am framing. So I placed my rotary tool on top of the honeycomb. It's okay if you don't have the honeycomb, you can just place it on your base plate. I put my honeycomb on level gamma because that is what the measuring tape told me to do. And if you don't have the honeycomb, it's no problem at all. You're just going to place your rotary tool onto the base plate. Now I'm going to place my cup onto the rotary tool. Once I place my cup onto the rotary tool, I'm just going to move the rotary tool so that the little red light that you see there is hitting the highest point on whatever it is that you're engraving. This is really important for the auto measure feature because otherwise, if you don't have it at the highest point, it's going to measure incorrectly. In addition, I also make sure that I put my rotary tool as straight as I can. Because I have the honeycomb, it makes it really easy. I just make sure that I line it up with the honeycombs. But if you don't, just try to keep it as straight as possible because it will make it a lot easier in the program when you're trying to place your design nice and straight. I'm going to place my level one more time on top of my tumbler. This is just to ensure that in the new setup it is level. And as you can see here, the bubble is part way between the two black lines, so I am ready to go. Okay, so I've got my machine all set up with the rotary and the cup inside, but now I need to get my image ready to go. So I'm going to go over here on the left-hand side of X, of my Xtool Creative Space software. I'm gonna click image, 
And I'm going to find the one that is my Yeti design, because that's the one I'm going to start with. I'm going to go ahead and click Unite up in the top left-hand corner, because I want to make sure that the design is united. And then over here on the right-hand side, I'm going to click Engrave. And before I even change what my settings are, I want to make sure that I connect my machine so I can go ahead and place this on the cup. So on the right-hand side, I'm going to click Connect Machine. And I'm going to do it by Wi-Fi today. Sometimes it takes a second to get it. Oh, and I found it, so I'll click that. And now it's going to capture the image of my what's going on inside of my machine. Okay, so now what I'm going to do on the right hand side is I'm going to make sure I click off my design. And on the right hand, you can see where it says laser flat. I'm going to change it to laser cylindrical. For my material, I am actually going to define my material by using the measurement. So I'm using my roller, which is important. If I was using my chuck, I would select chuck. But I'm using my roller, and I'm going to use this little measurement tool here. Remember, I made sure my laser was at the very top point of my Yeti, which is really important to make sure that everything is lined up perfectly. And actually, it worked out really well that it is now at the top hand side. That is definitely the top of my Yeti where I placed it on my laser. But now I need to make sure that I move my green over to where I want it to start, which is over here. So it's not quite, as you can see, it's not exactly where I want it to start. So I'm going to, inside of the machine, I'm just gonna roll my Yeti just slightly. Now I need to click refresh on the right hand side to recapture what it looks like. Okay, so now I can actually see the tape line. And so I'm going to put this right on the edge of the tape line. And what this green line means is this is where it's going to be starting. Now I have my design. And I want to try to line it up as close as I can with that green. And I know I want to fall about at the end of where this tape is. Now again, this is why it's so important to make sure that everything is even because once you have it in here, because it distorts what the actual tumbler looks like, it's really hard to tell whether or not it's level. So within the Facebook group, I actually did a search for what would be the best choice for a Yeti and I'm going to try the one that somebody said works the best and we will see whether or not this works, but we're gonna try it. So I'm gonna click on my design and for the engraving settings, for my power, I'm going to do 70%. For my speed, I'm going to do 75. Passes, I'm going to do one. And for lines per centimeters, I'm going to stick with 100. So I'm going to see whether or not this works, and we'll find out. So before we begin doing any sort of engraving, we want to make sure that we frame it. So on the bottom right-hand side, I'm going to click Framing. And then over on my machine, I'm going to make sure that I push the button to make sure my framing gets started. So I'm over at my machine ready to frame. My light is glowing, so I'm going to push this. And then I'm going to go from the side, where it's easiest to tell my laser, and make sure that it is right where I want to go. I see that it ends right before the tape. And I actually think we've got it pretty good. But I'm going to, it needs to probably come over just slightly. Okay, so I could see that I need to reframe it, and I moved my cup, so I'm going to refresh because it was not quite far enough over to the left, and this is why that tape is really important. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and try framing again, and actually this time I'm also going to move this up just slightly because I saw that it was hitting the end, the bottom of that, a little too much for my liking. Okay, so we're going to try this. Ready to try framing again for a second time. So I'm going to push my button on the front. And I'm going to watch over here where it goes. So the nice thing is, is I'm doing this with my camera, which makes it a little hard to see through. But I'm going to go ahead and actually 
watch it one more time myself without the camera to see if it's in the right place. Okay, I didn't like where that was again, so I just changed a little bit more. But I'm going to actually leave my line in the same spot, and now I'm going to try framing one more time. Which I'm not going to show you this time because I've shown you quite a few times. Okay, so I really liked this last place of where it landed. As you can see, my design is the correct direction with my cup. Everything looks good to go. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click start, which makes me nervous, but I think we are actually ready to start this. I'm not going to show you the entire engraving process, but I'll show you a little bit through my phone and then I'll show you the final product. So in the bottom right hand corner, I'm going to click start. Estimated time is six minutes. I don't think it's going to be that fast, but we'll see. Maybe, maybe we'll get lucky. In the upper right hand side, I'm going to click start. Our framing is complete. I've hit start and now I'm going to click the glowing button in the front to start our engraving. So my design is done. It took 10 minutes and 45 seconds. I can already tell I definitely messed up on my placement. But that's okay. This is just a random cup for me and it's the very first time I've ever done this. But what I need to do now is I will clean the cup and then I will show you what the finished product looks like. And then I'm also, before we get to the cleaning of the cups, I'm going to actually go ahead and engrave my second cup and show you how you have to level one that is not perfectly level because it's definitely a little bit trickier. So I placed the rotary tool with my second tumbler inside of my machine. I'm making sure that the light is hitting my tumbler at the highest point, just like I did with my last one. Now I'm going to place my level on top to make sure that my tumbler is level. It is pretty close to being level, but I'm going to adjust my dial until it gets what I think is level. Okay, now that it's level, I'm going to show you what the screen capture looks like and get this all set up within my program. Okay, so now I'm going to start with my second cup. I need to insert that image. So I'm going to go over here to the image on the left hand side. I'm going to find my Walmart cup design, which is this one. I'm going to go over here to the right and click engrave. And I'm going to leave it off to the side while I go and refresh my screen. Actually, before I refresh it, I'm going to go down here from laser flat and click laser cylindrical, click refresh. Okay, so now as you can see, my cup is in a very different placement. I need to measure it because it's a different cup. On the right hand side, again, I make sure I'm on roller. And I'm going to click over here, this little measuring tape ruler guy, and that will measure my cup and hopefully it'll work out but it failed. Okay, so it looks like my, it is too high up. So I'm gonna go ahead and click cancel and I'm gonna move out my honeycomb and have to start again. So we're gonna pause this. Okay, so I have had to remove my honeycomb because it is too tall. I actually almost deleted the entire first part of my video but decided that it would be better if you all could learn from my mistakes. So the honeycomb is too tall with this cup so I've just placed it on the regular base plate and I've made sure that my laser light is still hitting the highest point and then I need to make sure I re-level it because by taking it off the honeycomb it might have adjusted some and I, of course it did so I'm just going to adjust the dial until it is level just like last time. Okay, and that looks about right. And so I'm gonna show you in the program what this new setup looks like. Okay, so I'm going to refresh my screen because now that I've removed my honeycomb, it's definitely going to be in a very different position. Okay, it is much further down. I'm now going to on the right-hand side, again, make sure I am on roller. 
click my ruler to have it measure. And this time it is successfully measured it. I'm gonna wanna move my green. I want it to start, ooh, actually, now that it's upside down, oh, I need it to come over here. So I'm gonna have to roll my cup to get it as far close to the left other team. Okay, so now I have to refresh. Okay, and this is much better placement. I'm gonna actually remeasure because I moved my cup slightly and I had to actually re-level it as well. Okay, so now I'm gonna move my green all the way over here to the far left because I know I wanna start it about where this tape is. So for this time, for this design, I need to rotate this because my cup is now upside down. And I wanna make sure that I'm placing it in line pretty much with that green design. I'm gonna go a little bit to the outside of it. Now it's hard for me to tell this time whether or not my cup again is at an angle or not. I try to make it as straight as I could within the machine. As you can see on the right hand side that that line looks pretty straight over here. So I'm hoping that, let's see if I can. Okay, so I'm going to do framing to see if this looks like it's right. So in the bottom right hand side, I'm gonna click framing. Okay, so I'm gonna push my button to do framing. It's hard to tell where it's framing, so I'm actually not sure I can really capture it on video due to the current lighting in my garage. But I can already tell that it is not in the correct spot because it is hitting the metal at the top. So I've gotta move my design down again and try again. I've moved it and I'm going to try framing again only because of the lighting in my garage I really can't show you what the framing looks like so I showed you how to frame with my other cup design so for this one because of the black it's just too hard to see so I'm going to go ahead though and do the framing myself really quick to make sure it's lined up properly so again I'll click framing and I'll push the button on my machine so now that I have done my framing and I know it's correct I need to actually make sure that my engraving settings are correct I'm going to select my design and I'm going to use my same Yeti settings with the 70% power, 75 speed, but I'm going to up my lines per centimeter. I'm going to go up to 220, which is more lines per centimeter because this design is more intricate. And I thought, I felt like my other Yeti design could have been a little bit cleaner looking and I'm hoping this will work because this is metal. I can up my lines per centimeter. If this was wood, upping the lines to that much per centimeter could result in honestly causing a fire. But because this is metal, I'm not as worried about this being flammable and catching on fire. So we're gonna go ahead. So I'm going to click start. I'm gonna show you just a quick sec, a few seconds of it engraving, and then I will come back and show you the final product. So I'll click start in the bottom right hand corner. As you can see, my design is upside down like I'd like it to be. It's estimating that it'll take 11 minutes. My guess is it'll be closer to probably more like 15. So I'm gonna click start in the upper right hand corner. My machine, I've got my cup ready. It is glowing. I'm gonna push the button to start. And it's going to start. really hard to see it on the black so when I come back and once we clean up our cup it's gonna look a lot different my cup is done it took 21 minutes and 12 seconds so it took even longer than I thought but I'm gonna get it out and clean it up and then show you guys the finished products